جو میسج کہتے ہیں سر
I'm not hearing. Is it is the meeting started as yet? No, it's not. The meeting starts at six o'clock, Miss Price. Oh, sorry. Oh, all right. At six o'clock. All right.
stuck on you And got this feeling down deep in my soul I just can't lose Guess I'm on my way Needed a friend In the way that now I guess that I'll be with you too Guess I'm on my way Stuck on you Got this feeling down in my soul I just can't Guess I'm on my way Needed a friend In the way I'm stuck on you too. Better fool, guess I'm long. I'm stuck on you. Guess I'm long. I'm so Guess I'm long. So I'm Better walk like you could wait around for me. Needed. Guess I'm long. I'm stuck on you Better get as long as this time I'm stuck on you. Get as long as this time I'm stuck on you. Get as long as this time I'm stuck on you. Get as long as this time I'm stuck on you. Get as long as this time I'm stuck on you. Get as long as this time I'm stuck on you. Get as long as this time I'm stuck on you. Get as long as this time I'm stuck on you. Get as long as this time I'm stuck on you. Mr. Press, could you please mute your microphone?
brought to you by Chris and Charles.
Love you like a fresh vegetable So tell me it's your love Tony Rebel Me love you like a fresh vegetable So tell me it's your love Tony Rebel Because you want to let me a roll me You want me to say don't love lady to how we a one go And me love you girl and me can't get over to So let me tell you something where you want to know Love you like vegetable So tell me it's your love Tony Rebel So tell me if you love Tony Rebel Watch me now so If it is no accident don't say so But if it is yes I want you Say we the best And never forget that you will never regret Cause my love in Rasta no one the best Like fresh vegetable So tell me if you love the Tony Rebel Love your life fresh vegetable So tell me if you love Tony Rebel Because I love you January We love you September Cause I just gotta get in Cause I'm trying to get to you To you To you See my days are cold without you Another, another one Good evening, everyone. Are you hearing me? Yes, dear. I'm hearing now. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Yes, we can hear. Good type. Good evening. All right. <clears throat> so we're going to begin our part-time orientation program for the Portmore Community College. Now, this evening is an information session, and I am not really your MC um, or chairperson. I'm not seeing her as yet, but because we said we would start at six, I was hoping she'd have joined us already. Unfortunately, she hasn't, and I'm hoping that she will come on very soon. One, one moment, please.
yes, sorry about that. Um, some persons were calling to find out where they could get the link. Right, so we're going to begin um, this evening on our orientation session for the academic year 2022-2023 for our part-time student. My name is Mrs. Corrine Richards and I am the principal of Portmore Community College. So as with most things that we do here at Portmore Community College, we usually begin with our at spiritual part of things where we ask for God's blessing on our proceedings. And so this evening, I know we should have on with us this evening, our president of our guild, our student guild, um, Mr. Tyrese Sherman with his team. Tyrese, are you here? Yes, Ms. Richards, right. I am here. Right, he's here, right. So Tyrese is going to lead us off, ladies and gentlemen, on our devotion session. I'll hand over to Tyrese now. Go ahead, Tyrese. Okay, so good evening, everyone. It's indeed a pleasure having you all here online. So we will be leading you off in a few lively courses, followed by a scripture reading as well as an exhortation. And then we'll be giving you a few tips that in line with our theme for this year, which is strategizing for growth. So at this time, I will be calling on Diana Mendes, who is our secretary for this academic year. So Ms. Mendes, please lead us in a few lively courses at this time. Good evening, guys. Like he said, uh, my name is Diana Mendez. However, I am the treasurer, <laughs> not the secretary. <laughs> Sorry for calling you out like that, president. Sir president. Um, no problem. You guys, you can sing behind the mic. All right, so the first one will be stand up and tell me if you love my Jesus. Stand up and tell me if you love, love my Jesus. Stand up and love me if you love me. I want to know if you love me. I want to know if you love me. Love my hands and tell me if you love me. Love hands and tell me if you love me. My, my Lord, Lord, I want, I want to, know to know if you love, you love my, my Jesus. Lord. I want to know if you love my Lord. Something in my heart, like a sweet running down. down. It makes you me feel you so happy, happy, as happy as, as can be. Can be. When I think of Jesus and what he has done for me, there is something in my heart like a stream running down. Something in my heart like a stream running down. It makes me feel so happy, as happy as can be. When I think of Jesus and what he has done for me, there is something in my heart like a stream running down. I feel good, good, good. I feel really wonderful, good. Every time I talk about Jesus, I feel good, good, good. I feel good, good, good. I feel really wonderful, good. Every time I talk about Jesus, I feel good, good, good. Thanks, thanks. I give you thanks for all I've done. I am so glad. My soul has found rest, oh Lord, I give you thanks, 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 and I give you thanks for all you have done, oh, I am so blessed. My soul is at rest, oh Lord, I 
Sir President. All right, so at this time, we'll be having our scripture lesson, which is taken from Proverbs 16, and I'll be reading from verses 1 to 9. And it reads, The plans of the heart belong to man, but the hands of the tongue is from the Lord. All the ways of a man are clean in his own sight, but the Lord weighs the motives. Commit your works to the Lord, and your plans will be established. The Lord has made everything from his own purpose, even the wicked for the day of evil. Everyone who is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Assuredly, he will not go unpunished. By loving kindness and truth, iniquity is atoned for. And by the fear of the Lord, one keeps away from evil. When a man's ways are pleasing to the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Better is a little with righteousness than great income with injustice. The mind of man plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. So as we move throughout this academic year, let us have the Lord direct our steps. Let us, let us plan events as well as plan or chart our course here at PCC that we do great things. Because once again, we are not failures, but we are actually successors. So let's succeed in everything that we do. And as we plan to go throughout this year in our studies, let us do excellent and have God's help as we seek to move and do great things throughout the rest of our lives. So at this time, I'll be asking Diana Mendes once again to lead us in a prayer course, and then shortly after, I will pray. All right, so let's uh, have some more friends as we sing, Welcome Holy Spirit. Welcome Holy Spirit. Feeling your presence, fill us with your power, live inside of me, oh, welcome Holy Spirit, be here in your presence. Fill us with your power. Live inside of me. And you're the living water. Ever flowing fountain, comforter and counselor, take complete control. Lord, you're the living waters, oh, ever flowing. Fountain, comforter and counselor, take a brief control. Welcome, Holy Spirit, be here in your presence. Fill us with your power. Live inside of me. All right, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Most Righteous Father, we come for this time. Give you thanks for allowing us to be here on this online platform. Dear God, as we try to strategize for growth, help us to work together as a team, help us to communicate effectively so that we can get things accomplished. Please be with us throughout the rest of this information session, as well as allow us to get grounds covered. Be with us, guys, and protect us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Okay. Thank you very much, Tyrese and um, members of the student. And now we'll hand over to the lady of the hour, Mrs. Greta Christie, who will be our chairperson or moderator 
for this evening, and you'll see her there. Um, Miss Christy, over to you. You're muted, Mrs. Christie. Good afternoon, everyone. Good evening, everybody. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for being a part of this gathering. Um, let me take this opportunity. Uh -huh. um, well, my schedule said 6.30, so I had been sitting here at 6 o'clock, and then I heard, I looked at the thing and I saw 6.30, and I said, all right, we have a little time. But um, my teammate just caught up with me and reminded me to check the original schedule that said six, so we are on. Thank you very much to the team, the Student Guild president and his team for having the devotional exercise. And thank, thank you very much you. for being a part of this gathering. I'm having um, a feedback. Um, let so me on. take this opportunity. Um, well, my schedule said 6.30, so I I'm not sure if it's sitting here at 6 o'clock. And then I heard, I, I looked at the thing and I saw, all right, we have a little time. But um, all right, we have a little just time. Up with, but, yeah, um, my my about teammate about just caught up with me and checked out. You're muted again, uh, Mrs. Christie. Not sure what was happening. You were having a feedback. Do you have the YouTube on, Mrs. Christie? You're muted. You're still muted. I think we're better now. You're muted again, uh, Mrs. Christine. Not sure what was happening. You were having a feedback. Yes, we were getting a feedback. Are we okay now? Yes, we're hearing you clearly now. All right. My apologies. I think I was. Do you have the YouTube on? Mrs. Oh Christine? yes, I went there first. <laughs> okay. I went there first. You're muted. Apologies. You're still muted. <laughs> All right. So. Let me take this opportunity to welcome all the, especially the new students who are here. I think we're better now. You're muted again, uh, Mrs. Christine. Not sure what was happening. You were having a I, I, I don't yes. know. I am having that we're feedback you from, you clearly, but coming now? from my end this time. We're yes, hearing you clearly. clearly now. All right. My apologies. I think I was... So you have the YouTube on. Oh, Christine. yes. I I'm still hearing our feedback. <laughs> it is not coming from me I this time. You're muted. You're still muted. <laughs> all right. So let me take this opportunity to welcome all the, especially the new students who are here. Miss Christie, if you're in YouTube, close you're it down. Uh, Christy, not sure what's happening. You're having a feedback. All right. I'm I going am. to. I'm going to have jump on for a little while and come back in because they're having some feedback. We're still having some feedback, so let me jump out for a little while and then we jump back in. All right, so let me take this. All right, and Mrs. Christie seems to be having a little technical difficulty. Not to worry, we're going to move on. Uh, this time, I am going to take the opportunity to introduce to you the management team. So I started off by saying this is, um, I'm Corrine Richards, the principal, and we have with us here, Mr. Jeremy Pinnock, who is the head of department for the Pure and Applied Science. I know we should also have Miss, Mrs. Andrea Dwyer. She's the head of department for, Andrea, I'm not sure if you're here, um, head of department for- the, I'm here and on camera. Good. Mrs. Dwyer, um, head of department for the Arts and Humanities. We also have Miss Dowdy. Miss Dowdy, are you here? She is a head of department for the pre-college department. Mrs. Elise Norville, 
head of department for the business and professional studies department, Mrs. Latoya Walker Holness, head of department for the computer studies department. And we also have Mrs. Theresia Brown Lysom, who is the head of department, who is the head of department for our hospitality and tourism management department. We should also have on Mrs. Ramsaru, Mrs. Cheryl Ramsaru, who is the campus director for our Old Harbor campus. So students, welcome to our orientation program. As the first presenter, I'm going to do a brief presentation about Fort Moore Community College, what we offer and what we will be offering to you so we can move along quite quickly. Um, Mr. Are you ready for the technical team to start the PowerPoint presentation? Yes, ma'am. Please go ahead. Okay, slide one, please. Could you go to the next slide, please? All right. Former Community College was established in 1992 and it was established on the campuses of Hart College of Construction Services. The college was started under the leadership of the then Prime Minister, the Honorable Michael Manley, and Mrs. Helen Stills, who was at the time in the person leading the change in developing community colleges in Jamaica. We have two campuses, the main campus in Fort Moore, as I said, that we share with Hart College of Construction Services and our campus in Old Harbor. We are part of a consortium of community colleges and we are under the auspices of the Council of Community Colleges of Jamaica, the CCCJ. We're a wholly owned government institution and therefore we're owned by the Ministry of Education and Youth. So everything that we do falls under that ministry. The Council of Community Colleges of Jamaica, which is our umbrella organization, is an organization that provides oversight. They also, we offer most of their programs and they also grant our degrees. Please move to the next slide. We offer programs at the professional certificate level, and these are short courses that persons can do and get a professional certificate. For example, in basic and advanced geriatric care or computer repairs or in uh, mixology, different professional certificate. And this is for persons who might just be working and want to upskill and they can do these short certificate courses. We also offer associate degrees and bachelor's degrees, as well as diplomas. You'll hear a little, a little bit more about our associate degrees and bachelor's degrees when we go into our departments. We should note that all our degrees are accredited by the University Council of Jamaica. Now, because we're a community college, we respond to the needs of our community. And as a result of that, we have what is known as open access. So we have all persons coming in. They are coming from to us with no, well, no CXC, no real qualification. Our mandate is to take you from where you are to where you want to go as far as up to a bachelor's degree. So we start from the pre-college level where we offer city and girls, technical certificates, as well as CXC subjects. From there, we can go on to diplomas and professional certificate. We also offer associate degrees, technical degrees, and bachelor degrees. The technical degrees are associate 
um, occupational associate degrees, which is more for the students who are more technically inclined. Next slide, please. We, as I said, we take persons from every area, high school graduates, self-employed persons are employed or just if you just want to come in and study to do something. Could you move on for me, please? All right. Now, we are also offering, although we may not have persons from that cohort here, we're also part of the grade 12, 13 program that is sponsored by the Ministry of Education. Now, the Ministry of Education recognized that many students would have left high school at grade 11, grade 11, our fifth form, and they would not have had any kind of formal training, professional degrees or professional certificates. And so they decided to add an additional two years, not just for those people who want to do K, but for those people who want to do a technical certificate, do over some CXCs, or do another, or do an associate degree at their community colleges. And so we're part of the grade 12, 13 program. Could you move on for me, please? They will have to show. Bring up the other ones for me, please. Just press and bring them up. Thank you. Right. So there are three pathways that we offer students. And as I said, I may not have anyone in this group that is part of the grade 12, 13 program. For you to be part of that program, you would have had to leave high school either this year or last year. But you may have relatives that have left high school this year or last year. We are still accepting students in these pathway programs. So if you know anyone who has just left high school, they can still come and apply and come in and benefit from this program. So our pathway one would look at those persons who have left high school with five or more CXCs, inclusive of math and English. They can do occupational associate degree if they have city and guilds, math and English level three and NCT vet level two certificate. We also have college associate degrees which are our regular degrees that you'll hear more about and that they would be required to have five CXCs. However, if they have four CXCs with English, they can still come in provisionally and we will help them to get the other CXC and we offer K. For pathway two, this is students who would have three, two or one CXC. Those students will come in and we will allow them to do more CXCs they will also be doing an NBQJ level two certificate, and they can also do City and Guilds Math and English level three. For pathway three, this is students who would not have had any CXCs, so they didn't pass any CXCs. And these students again can come in, they can start, we will build their skills. Here they will do the NBQJ level one program, as well as City and Guilds Mathematics, level one and two. This year, we are working with our students to do the level two so they can move on to the pathway two. Please, next slide. All right, so now we look at the academic degrees, which may be more applicable to the students who are here. So our first degree um, department is Arts and Humanities. And here we're offering the associate degree in criminal justice social work associate and bachelor's degree, as well as professional certificates. This year, we'll also be offering the associate degree in paralegal studies. Now, this, these associate degrees, as I said, are accredited degrees, and the associate degree is usually the first two years of the bachelor's degree, but we break it up into two parts, associate and bachelor's, to allow for students to do one part and get a job work and then continue on to their bachelor's degree. Next slide, please. We have the business and professional studies. Now, this is what we call our flagship department. Our programs here are well known all over the place. We do the associate degree in business administration and the bachelor's degree in business administration, which is the last two years. And this allows for the students to 
specialize in areas such as finance, management, HR, accounts. Next slide, please. Our computer studies department offers associate degrees in computer servicing and electronics, applied computer application and business studies, management information system. And the two years after we to complete their bachelor's degree in computer engineering technology, computer application and business studies and management information services. We also have some very good certificate course um, short programs here in things like data analytics, cybersecurity, and others that persons, again, who are listening, and you may want to upskill because this is an area that you can get a lot of work online, even with companies abroad. Next slide, please. Of course, we know that we are not only about academic studying to get a degree, there's a lot of extracurricular activities that we offer here at the college. And I want to say to this group of students that although you're part-time students, we have always encouraged our students to ensure that they become a part of the activities that we're doing. We believe that the holistic development of our students is very important. And so we have for our performing arts students, we do our community services, and of course, we have many clubs and societies. Now, these would have been affected by COVID, so we didn't get to do as much as we wanted, but now that we're able to meet face-to-face -face once again, we will, of course, be doing many of these activities. The Student Guild will also be having their activities that they will be sharing with the students, and we want you as part-time students to know that your representation on the Student Guild is also very important because the Gill represents all our students, part-time and full-time. Next slide, please. Our hospitality and tourism management. We have our associate in health and wellness tourism, hospitality and tourism management, both the associate and the bachelor's degree. This again is one of our well-known programs. And of course, it is the flagship program of our old Harbor campus. So even for students who do this program on the main campus, because we offer it here, we also, they will also have to visit the Old Harbor campus because that is where we have our labs that they will need to do their practicals in. The food lab, the restaurant, the flat for hospitality and all the things that you need to do down there. Next slide, please. We have a pure and applied science. And so we are offering in that, we have the Associate of Science degree in architectural and construction technology, as well as engineering and occupational associate degree in construction site management. Now we're currently offering just the associate degrees here. Our students will usually go on to UTEC to complete their bachelor's degree in engineering or in the construction or architecture degree up there. Next slide, please. We also have our nursing and allied health department. And so we are upgrading, we used to offer the um, enrolled assistant nurse diploma. That is now being upgraded to an associate in, of science degree in assistant nurse. We also we're, we'll be offering this year new, for those of you who may be interested, because this is one of the area that we get a lot of requests and you can actually work online with it, um, is the associate degree in pharmacy technician. And of course we have our <clears throat> certificates in geriatric care, both at the basic and the advanced level. Um, the only challenge is that our nursing program is usually very restricted, limited, because the number of students that we get are limited to those that the nursing council will allow us to get. So I can say right now that our nursing program is actually oversubscribed. So it is not likely that you would get in this year if you are considering the um, nursing program. Our programs are applied science programs. And so we have very hands-on. So you'll notice there 
um, the students are doing their restaurant service. So that's a restaurant on the Old Harbor campus. Nurses are there in the lab looking at using a, a mannequin to see, um, to do their medical practice on. And of course, in our computer department where students are in there working on the computer, the science lab for science students. The picture at the bottom also shows when we have our business launch because our programs are very practical students. When you come to Portmore Community College, the programs that you do have the appropriate theoretical framework, the appropriate theoretical um, meaning. There are lots of general courses, communication, introduction to psychology, introduction to management. Those are some of the courses that are, we call those a general education program. But in addition to that, a lot of your work is going to be actual practical. So you not only learn the theory, but you're also required to apply that theory in a practical sense. So for example, those students who are doing hospitality and they're looking at a restaurant, they're required to run a restaurant for a while. They have to set up a business and they have to run the restaurant as in buying food, preparing it, cooking, selling it, and then doing their accounts. Because when they leave, we want them to be able to set up their own business. And the same thing apply for business students and all students. When they leave Portmore Community College, you are ready for the world of work. Like I think we're at the end of that slide. Sorry, one last department, or could I forget this? Our pre-college department, our pre-college department, as we said, we don't turn back anybody. So if you do not have CXCs or City and Gills, you can come to Portmore Community College. In the pre-college department, we offer our CSEC, City and Gills Technical Certificate, and we also offer key. So what do we do at Portmore Community College? Portmore Community College is the college that has open access. If you want to study, you apply and you come. You don't have CXCs, well, you begin in the pre-college. You don't have enough CXCs. You may not be sure of what you want to do. Maybe you're more technically inclined. Again, you come, we have a place for you here at the college. Our programs are extremely affordable. We are known as the college that offers very, very reasonable and flexible payment plans. And so what we do is we want to ensure that all our students who come in get an opportunity to earn an accredited degree and professional degree that they can earn a living and they don't have to go and pay these high, high fees that other institutions pay. The reason for this, um, students, is because, as I said before, we are funded by the ministry. And what we try to do is to keep the costs at a level that will allow someone who might not be able to move on, never thought they were going to move on to tertiary institution or post-secondary post education. You know, you left high school and you started to work, to earn a little money because your parents probably didn't have the money to send you to college or university. But now you're at the stage where you want to improve, you want to become certified. Here is the college that you can come and you can get that at a very reasonable price. Reasonable costs, we do. We try to be very flexible with our students for payment and we try to provide the support that you need. The community colleges play a very important role in the tertiary institution of this country. It is sometimes not as recognized as other institutions, but I can assure you that we have students from the highest level in this land, serving at the highest level, right down many government ministries, businesses, banks, industries, employ our students. We boast that when our students complete their degree at Fort Worth Community College, they do not remain unemployed. As a matter of fact, when we get requests for students for jobs, we oftentimes are not able to find students when we have companies that send to us to, um, to get persons for work because our students are engaged. This year, for example, all our students, based on the report I have from the head of the department, all of our students who completed the bachelor's degree in hospitality and tourism management are currently working overseas. We also have students in the associate degree 
who are working overseas and we're hoping they'll come back to complete their degrees. Our business students, our computer students, second to none, ladies and gentlemen, when our students complete their course of study and they have successfully done everything they should and get their degrees, they're able to find jobs. We get very good feedback from employers because they said our students not only know the theory, but they can actually do it when they come out there to work. So ladies and gentlemen, you are coming to an excellent institution. You're coming to an institution that provides you with affordable, high quality, tertiary education. Degrees that are valid as degrees that you will get from any other from the University of the West Indies, right now. Our degrees are as valid. They are accredited by the same accreditation of um, institution, the UCJ. We try to work with our students, and you'll hear more about that as the different presenters present to you this evening on the different services and the different areas that we will be offering. In closing, I would like to say, as I said, for many years, we have shared campuses with the Hart College of Construction Services. And as our partner education institution, we all are government institution, we have been very fortunate to have that relationship. However, we want to move on now to establishing our own main campus here in Portmore because there are some facilities that we want to put in to expand the offering because Portmore is growing and there's a lot of persons who are here. And it's not just in Portmore, but we're talking Spanish Town, Old Harbor, et cetera. So we want to, for example, offer the bachelor's degree in nursing. We want to go up to the bachelor's degree in our engineering and construction. We want to go out to branch out some more in our hospitality and tourism, culinary arts, different things. We want to ensure that the people in St. Catherine have a first class affordable institution to come and complete your degree. So you can work locally or globally, or you can stay local and work global. That is what we're aiming to do. So this year, you're joining the institution at a very exciting time because we're now on the way, started. We've started the journey to establishing the campuses for the Portmore Community College here in Portmore, St. Catherine. I'm looking forward to serving all of you as your principal, and we're here to work with you. We're not perfect, so sometimes things might not go the way you want them to. There are challenges and you might, but we still want you to understand that we're here and we will do our best to offer you the best education possible. Thank you very much, and please enjoy the rest of the orientation session. Thank you very much, Mrs. Richards. And you have heard it well said from our team captain. And it was a mouthful indeed. I'm sure many of you are still writing, still recording um, some of the information that was just passed on. But don't worry if you feel that you have missed any, we will do it all over again for you at the different department levels. All right. But just making sure that you are paying attention. I have a giveaway for the first, first student to type in the chat um, based on our captain's presentation. What are the four pathways to higher education that Portmore Community College is currently engaging? In? What are the four pathways to higher learning? Quickly, anybody? Just type in the chat and we have a Portmore Community College giveaway just for you. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, not pass a one, two, and three. Ah, okay. So Michaela, Michaela, um, Bachelor's degree, associate degree, diplomas, and of course, our pre-college, CXC, and so on. All right, so Michaela, um, pat yourself on the shoulder. You just won yourself a prize. Thank you for staying tuned to the presentation. Now, part of the reason why we have to have orientation for our students, one, um, 
we want to say to you, and this is not because we want you to sign up with Portmore Community College. Of course, we know those returning students who are coming into the bachelor's students who are ever so loyal to the college, regardless of the challenges. And Mrs. Richards alluded to the fact that we are not perfect, but we are working on our issues that we have like any other tertiary institution. We are growing. So we want to welcome those persons, but the new persons who are thinking of joining, we want to say to you, we appreciate you. Appreciate you not because you're choosing Portmore Community College, but because right now at this very moment, you are choosing to make a very important decision in spite of your own personal challenges. I know many of you have children, you have work, you have so many things that you are trying to navigate right now, but we're saying to you, regardless of the decision that you are going to make, whether you choose us or another institution, we are saying, and we're really hoping that you choose us, we are saying to you that we appreciate your effort. Thank you. And for the returning students, thank you for your loyalty. At this time, we want to show off a bit of the talent that we have at Portmore Community College and one of our very new team members, Ms. Dwyer, our HOD for Hearts and Humanities. Ms. Dwyer, she's going to be doing a presentation for you. Let's welcome Ms. Dwyer. Okay, I'm coming on. Okay, so I Which hope you, you are seeing me. Let me get a little bit closer. Okay, so you heard everything about Portmore Community College and you heard that Portmore was creating waves and one of the things that you will soon find out quickly is that Portmore Community College is a multifaceted institution. What does that mean? We look about with Talawa. We have performances in many areas. And so all of our students are exposed in areas that allow you to be the holistic you. So you will develop in a number of areas. Uh, what we believe at Portmore Community College is that you don't need just to be engaged in academia, but you should also be a part of the social programs that are around you. And so we're big on performances. When our principal showed um, the PowerPoint, you saw where our students were performing. They have won several awards at, from the Jamaica Cultural Development Corporation and so on. So this evening, I'm just going to give you a little piece of something that speaks about the culture. You know that we can still enjoy performances online. So because we're not face to face, it doesn't necessarily mean we can't have a good time. So what I wanted to do is after after three, you're just going to start put the emojis in there, you know, and that will kind of spur me on to put some energy in it. So start, you know, start putting the emojis, start putting the emojis. Because like we said, I want you to type lick about the talawa. All right. So we're big on culture. So this piece is about the Jamaican culture and how we need to preserve it. When we take a stop and look back, me have to chat about the fact that some people forget the culture of them once done. Them drift, take a leap, so far from them root. Some of them forget the very days of the youth. Give me back my culture, my old time culture, where most people seem to forget. Give me back my culture, my Jamaican culture. Nothing more, not less, me not take. Remember when we used to jump and we used to plant to the Kumina, Brookings, and the Etu. And we used to run and hide from the Jankunu. Give me back my culture, my old time culture, where most people seem to forget. Give me back my culture, my Jamaican culture. Nothing more, nothing less, me not take. We national dish at the answer fish. We national flower leg number teach. We have to adore. We can't ignore the culture. Give me back my culture, my Jamaican culture. Give me back my culture. 
Jamaicans. We used to dive in and we mackerel run them and then we wash it down with little wash. But nowadays, them get too posh. Give me back my culture, my old time culture, where most people seem to forget. Give me back my culture, my Jamaican culture. Not more, not less, me not PTT newcomers, we have to adore, we can't ignore the culture. We say we have to adore, we can't ignore the culture. Give me back my culture. Type that in the chat. Give me back my culture. Give me back my culture. Love you. And so that is just a tip of the iceberg when we meet and we can also have these performances on Zoom for our part-time students. Give me back my culture. Thank you. Thank you very much, Miss Doya. May I tell you, Miss Doya, boy, if you ever see all the students, I'm really light at the place. I don't, let me tell you something. She is small in stature, but she's really mm -hmm. Talawa, quite representative of what Portmore Community College is. Let me share something with you as she talks about our culture. Years ago, before COVID came, um, we had a German squad. And that African German squad would go to JCDC every year and beat everybody at the German competition. We did so well as an institution that at one point JCDC kindly wrote to the college to say, it is obvious that Portmore Community College is way above the caliber of the JCDC and that we will never forget. So now that we have aligned ourselves to the eventualities like COVID and all of those things and we're getting ourselves back in order and we're getting ourselves back into active, full active mode. We want to bring back to Portmore Community College that name that went out across Jamaica as the national squad coming out of Portmore Community. And there were many other national things that we did. So those of you who thought that we were just about the books, I tell you, you have another guest coming and the principal has promised that this is the year, regardless of where we are, we are headed back out of this. We're taking Portmore Community College back into the streets. So wherever you are, the nooks and crannies, and as one of my friends would say, even back a God, you are going to hear from us because that is what we are. Look about Talawa and we have a culture to bring to the streets. Thank you very much again, Miss Dwyer. Thank you very much for your presentation. All right. And as I said, boy, if you ever see another chat, the students them literally light fire in the, ch in the chat. All right. So at this time, I am going to invite a, one of our guidance counselors from main campus, Mr. Kirk Morris, as he comes to us to present on some of the, the services that are offered at Portmore Community College. Um, we are, as I said before, we're not just about the books, but we are about students' holistic development. And we are making sure that you are covered. So Kurt Morris is going to come and give you uh, just a brief um, synopsis of what we do um, as a college from Student Support Services. Welcome, Mr. Morris. Thank you, Mrs. Christie. Um, hold on. All right, so good evening, students. Let me just close the door. All right, sorry about that. All right, so from the student support department, we offer a variety of services, right? Um, but before I do that, I just want to name the team that are involved at the student support department. So we have the guidance counselors, we have myself, that's Kurt Morris, and we have Miss Sandra Masters, who is on the main campus. We also have Mrs. Charmaine Williams, who is on the Old Arbor campus. Then we have the placement officer, Mrs. Affleck um, Edwards, 
So she's a placement officer. We have the nurses. So we have Nurse Finnegan. She's on the main campus. And Nurse Wright is on the Old Arbor campus. We also have Miss McIntosh, who is on the main campus, who deals with community service. So I'm now going to speak about some of the services that we offer from my department. So the Department of Student Support Services seek to assist in, the, in creating a learning environment and fostering a holistic development of the individual student through programs and activities. The counseling, so we have for counseling, personal and career counseling. So you know for persons who are leaving high school are not sure what career they want to go into. We offer those set of, sort of a counseling and also personal counseling as well. We offer peer counseling, which we are, are in the process. We have launched the, pro, the counseling and we are now going to do some training for our peer counselors in, from our department. We offer group counseling as well. And these counseling are through important relevant session as the needs arise and regular class visitation, especially during the COVID session, we, used to, we were able to visit the class to talk to the students about various aspects of life. We offer welfare and financial assistance, so such as scholarship and grants, uh, parts. So if, if students are on, were on part up to high school, we have the scholarship and, and grant for part students. So Miss Masters is the one that deals with that aspect where you get the form and fill it out and drop it off at this, the campus and she will do the necessary. We offer earn and learn, but because of COVID, we had stopped that. So this is, a, this is a time that students could learn and also earn a little as it relates to the, work their hours and then some, a fraction of it to go towards their school fee. So we are in the process of um, starting back um, that up as soon as school is up and running. So we are working towards that as well. Work experience and placement. So the placement officer, uh, Mrs. Edwards normally do um, sessions with the students. So she will, the, this session will include resume writing, um, cover notes and all of that. And, and it, she takes into a consideration as well, the whole aspect of dressing for an interview, so dressing for success. So those are some of the things that we offer and Mrs. Edwards is the one that deals with that. So as part of the CCCJ program requirement, all students in the professional program must complete 240 hours of work experience. If you are working, if you are working your, your field of study, you are expected to get what is called a job as, as, so assessment rather. Um, Galaxy, come in. Galaxy, can you be muted? Okay. So this is mainly for the part-time students. If they are employed and not in their field of study, um, are required to do 80 hours of work experience. So as we said, preparation, um, preparing students for the work of world, world of work, and as we said, resume and letter application writing, liaising with employers regarding job offers and arranging for interviews. We do assist in preparing for employment documents and advertising of job. So once we get um, job opportunities, Mrs. Edwards would verify and then we'll ask them to send out to the students. The community service students, so this is another important aspect of the department. So all students who are in the professional um, areas, you need to complete 30 hours of community service. So the coordinating um, community service program where students give 30 hours of volunteer service as part of their course requirement. We are encouraging students to start as soon as possible. You will be advised accordingly by Ms. Rakida McIntosh, our student affairs officer. So students, sometimes we take this lightly, but um, and then at the end of it, when you complete all your courses, you're unable to graduate it, uh, or you're unable to get your paperwork because you, do, you did not do community service. service. So remember that community
These can be done at every, any government places, um, NGOs, which is non-government um, um, organization. We can do it through service clubs such as Red Cross, Kiwanis, our Circle K Club. We can do it through like a children home or golden age home and stuff like those. We also offer health care and medical advice and insurance related. So the nurses are there to offer these um, aspect to our students. So they're treat um, minor cuts, bruising and so on, uh, individual counseling on health issues, arrange health fairs and so on. We have also have sporting activities that we do in the department. And we'll be bringing back these because you know, through COVID, through the time of COVID, we're not able to offer these sporting activities. So I'm sure that this year we'll be starting. And we even have somebody on the union, which is our sports chairwoman, our chairperson, she'll be in charge of um, sporting. And we also have some faculty advisors that are uh, um, assigned to these persons. Extracurricular activities. So that's another area, guys, that we um, focus on. So you realize it's, it's, it's a holistic approach. So we have different clubs. So uh, up to COVID time, it was Circle K was the only club that was active. Um, we did a project at the Cumberland Basic School where we did painting and we did other projects. And I, I was a faculty advisor for up to this year. So we had done a lot during COVID. Other clubs that we have available were the chess club, health and wellness, environmental club, computer clubs, domino clubs, and other clubs. But due to COVID, we haven't been doing those clubs, but we plan to revive these clubs. And we ask for your participation in these clubs. We now also have the Student Guild Council that are there that will be your voice for the academic year. So they will take all your concern on stuff to management. So very important also we have the assembly, general assembly period. And we normally have that on a Thursday morning at 10 a.m. And all students are expected to be at the general assembly. I know most, this is the evening student, but um, it's mostly our day students, especially because it's face-to-face, -face, but I'm just informing you. And last but not least, we ask that you still maintain the COVID protocol as well as we try to enjoy ourselves, whether at our activities and also as we do study hard and engage in the various things that will be on campus. So as part-time student, you may say, but you don't have time for those things, but I am sure you'll find some time for some a little fun as well, and even for the sporting activities outside of work where we have sports day. So again, these are the various activities for our department from student support services. And feel free to speak to any one of us from student support service. If you are having any challenges, we're always here for you. So again, thank you students for listening and do enjoy your stay at Portmore Community College. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Kirk Morris, one of our guidance counselors at Student Support Services, Portmore Community College main campus. And you know exactly where to find the rest of his team. He just um, gave you the list of the members of his team and what each member contributes to the team. Now, I know some of you may be asking, why am I the community service? Why am I doing work experience and so on? and all of those things. I will say, I will give you the same answer that I got years ago when I inquired at the council. <laughs> the, it is the student who is part-time and not the program. It is the student who is part-time and not the program. One of the reasons why you chose Portmore Community College is that you want to study at a place where there are standards. And so because there are standards, whatever, requirements are there for the associate degree 
full time, it's also the same associate degree for part time. So I'm sure that you can appreciate that we try our best to maintain the same standards right across the board. Don't be afraid to dive into work experience. And I can tell you why. We have proven as a college that the proof of the pudding is really in the eating. Um, through work experience, the institution gets the opportunity to test the product on the market. You are our product. And we are always amazed at the employer's response to the students and what they are able to do, how well they are able to shine. And not just those that actually go out, but those who actually choose to do their work experience within their own organization, believe me, um, many of you, though they may not say it to your face, many of you have shown that you would have shown that you are improving and so on. And so our students do that. They take the opportunity um, to show that they are growing as a result of their training. They show that they are able to shine and the employers are very impressed because they also have to grade the students. So, you know, it is something that involves your employer as well. And so it is quite an interaction that takes place between the college, the student and the employers. And we appreciate that because they help to inform the pro programs that we offer at the college in terms of the skills and competences that they need to see their workers have. And so they form a big part of what we do as well. So we appreciate the programs. I see some hands up. Are we taking questions now? Or we want to take the questions later after we get another presenter on the floor. So Nikisha and others, we are acknowledging the hands and we're going to take your questions shortly, all right? Okay, so at this time, I'm going to invite Mr. Tyrese Sherman, the student union president. He's going to come and introduce the student guild. Please pay attention, because guess what? You guys have representatives there. All right, Mr. Sherman, the floor is yours. Okay, so good night, Ms. Christie, as well as everyone else who is online. So for those who are unaware of who I am, I will be serving as your guild president for the academic year 2022 to 2023. So along with myself, you will have the team comprising of our first vice president, who is Dana Barrett. If they are online, I will ask them to please turn their cameras on so that you can see who they are, because we will be the ones representing you and your concerns at the board level. So just to continue, so. Just to recap, that's the first vice president, that is Dana Barrett. Our second vice president is Kadeen Davis. Our secretary is Moisha Hemmings. Our treasurer is Diana Mendez. Our public relations officer is Rosemary Bailey. Our chairwoman of cultural and entertainment, that is Gabriel Gordon. Our chairwoman of sports is Shaquilla Morris. Our chairman of interclubs, that is Dominique Hall. And finally, our chairman of media and publication, that is Maurice Allen. So if you are all on, could you please turn on your camera or just give a wave of a hand if your cameras are on so people know who you are, so they'll be familiar with the faces as well as the voices that will be presenting their concerns. So anything that you guys have, as long as it is based on fact, reason, and logic, we are able to actually express these to have your concerns addressed. So thank you very much. So that is my team right there. So we do look forward to working with you as well as representing your concerns, as well as planning events for you, because as stated, we are not just academics and academia, but we're also here for holistic development. And that is what we're actually here to serve for. So someone asked me to repeat the names. Sure, no problem. So our first vice president, that is Dana Barrett, or second vice president, that is Kadeen Davis, our secretary is Moisha Hemmings. Mr. Our treasurer Chairman. is Diana Mendez. Yes. I'm sorry to interrupt you. My name is Dania, D-A-N-I-A. My apologies for the pronunciation. So that's okay. Dania Barrett. Okay. So our treasurer, Diana Mendez. Our public relations officer, Rosemary Bailey. 
or Chairwoman of Cultural and Entertainment, that's Gabrielle Gordon, or Chairwoman of Sports, that's Shaquilla Morris, or Chairman of Interclubs, that's Dominic Hall, and our Chairman of Media and Publication is Maurice Allen. I hope that you are all able to hear their names. All right, so that is it. We well, heard the name, but you said, excuse me, sorry, good night. We heard the name, but I sure you did say they are to open their camera that we can see, but I don't see anybody other than. Some of the cameras are off. Yes. Their cameras were on, but because they were muted, you probably didn't see it and they weren't pinned. So that's the reason. All right. All right. Thank Ms. you very Ms. much, Mr. Sherman. Thank you for introducing your team to us. I am particularly proud of the, the group of student union reps for this year. Why? Because we have part-time people represented. Um, yes, in a very, very powerful way. I appreciate that because over the years, it has been difficult getting part-time people to be a part of the student guild. Most times they say they don't have the time, they have so much work to do, and you know, all, all sorts of excuses. But I am really appreciative that persons took the time out to step up to the challenge. And it seems as if Mrs. Mrs. Richards has rubbed off on this young man very well. You notice I'm start. We represent you at the board level, man. You see that? Is Mr. Charles rubbing off on him already, you know? All right. So there you go. Your own teammates, your colleagues who are standing prepared to represent you at the highest level. Um, they have a number of community service activities planned for the institution as a community college. Um, and in keeping with Vision 2030, we also have to be engaged. We have to engage the communities around the college, in and around the college. So we have to be there. And this team is ready, ready, and ready to go. All right. So whenever they are soliciting your support, please remember that they represent you wherever they go. So, you know, just make sure that you stand there. I know you voted for them. You voted for them. And so now they are relying on your 100% support for whatever activities they're going to be engaged in. Thank you again, Mr. Sherman, for your introductions. And I hope the team um, will live up to the expectations of the student body. All right, thank you. At this time, I'm going to show off another bit of our talent. Yes, with a girl who can sing. All right, so she is coming to us from the Olaba campus and she is the head of hospitality management. She's the head of that department and she's no other than Miss Caricia Brown Lysam. All right, Miss Lysam, take it away. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for having me. Um, I just want to give God thanks and I'm so happy that so many of you could be on tonight and we have to give God thanks that he never fails us, he never leaves us and because of that he is no way different where he's going to leave you at this time but his goodness and his grace will carry you through so it's just a bit of worshiping God that he would have allowed you to be enrolled with us here at Portmore Community College, a great college that has a great mission, a great vision, and is one that brings success to the lives of, um, to the lives of persons who want a better uh, career. And so I just want to encourage you with this song. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. 
I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in darkest night. You were close like no other. I've known you as a father. Oh, I know you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. Yeah. Oh, my life, you have been faithful. Oh, yes. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. Oh, all your life he's been so good to you. Oh, with every breath that you have taken, you must sing of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, it's running after. To me, your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Oh, yes, your goodness is running after, it's running after me. All my life you have been faithful, oh yes. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Yes, all your life he has been faithful. All your life he has been so, so good. With every breath that you are taking, I encourage you just to sing of is goodness. Oh, yeah, yeah. I will sing of the goodness of God. Thank you very much, Mrs. Carisha Lysam Brown. All my life you have been faithful. Thank you so much for that lovely song. I realize that persons are still trying to, you know, let it digest. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Um, at this time, I'm going to invite Miss Nadine Riley, our registrar, to come and give a brief presentation. And she's going to be brief with you. But here's the thing um, what she's about to tell you, people has to do with the standards that we have to maintain. You have to remember that we are held accountable to the institution that grants your degrees. And so there are certain processes and procedures that all have to make sure that we adhere to in terms of your documentation and the processes that you must follow, right? So, Please welcome Ms. Nadine Riley as she shared with you in brief some of the things that you need to do right now if you intend to 
re-register as a, a continuing student or actually initiate your registration as a new student. All right, welcome Ms. Nadine Riley. Ms. Riley? All right, we're not hearing Ms. Riley. Ms. Riley? All right, so is Ms. Stewart here? Ms. Stewart, Talisa? Yes, I am. All right, so Ms. Stewart, I'm gonna ask you just to um, slip into Ms. Riley's spot in the interest of time. I'm not hearing Ms. Riley. I don't know what happened if she got disconnected, but all right, so. Um, Ms. Talisa is going to be giving a presentation on um, the, what is offered at the library, right? All the services, the courses that you will need to study, and um, where to find what. Thank you, Talisa. Okay. Good night, everyone. I am going to be doing a very brief um, presentation on the library services that we currently offer. All right, next slide, Mr. Daly. So we open, to begin with, we have four members of staff on the main campus. Myself, the librarian, and two, three other library assistants. And we also have a library on the Old Harbor campus which is managed by our librarian down there, Miss Avia Brown. Now we open, at, at present, we open Mondays to Thursdays, 8.30 to 5, and on Fridays from 8.30 to 4, and Saturdays 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Now as the semester progresses, we will, we will extend the hours during the week to facilitate our even um, students. Next slide. No, the um the major resources that we have at our library are our library databases, our library catalog, and secondary or textbooks and past exam papers. Now, at our library databases are really collections of online resources that you can access remotely. And when when we talk about online resources, we are talking about ebooks audios, videos, um, journal articles, which you can access basically any, from anywhere once you have internet access, right? Now, you will use your library catalog to search for the textbooks that we have at the library and also to download your past exam papers. Next slide. No, we do lend our, the textbooks that are available, we do lend them to students and staff as well. For students, you're able to get the books to borrow for overnight, weekend, or reading room, and also for two week um, periods. What we have in our reserve book collection are the later editions of the textbooks, which you will get for overnight and weekend and reading room. And in the Open Shelf General Collection, you'll have the earlier edition of the textbooks, and those are the ones that you can get for two weeks. We also have our pickup service. So for online um, students who are online, you can search a library catalog. Once you find a text that you're interested in, you can contact us and arrange for a pickup. There are cases where you might ask for a particular text and we might have a single copy. What we'll do in that case is to scan whatever chapter you need and email it to you. All right, next slide. We also offer research assistance. And this includes um, teaching you how to use the library databases, how to use APA, and APA is, stands for the American Psychological Association. And it is the writing standard that is used at Portmore Community College. And you will need it when you are doing your written papers 
and it will provide guidance on how to cite your sources and how to compile your 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 your, your, your resources that were used for the research. We will also show you how to use Turnitin, which is a software or a platform that is used to help you to identify similarities and hence avoid plagiarism. Now, I will not go in depth regarding these um, resources because we will have sessions throughout the semester. Uh, we will meet as a group to show you how to use them. And also we facilitate um, individual requests. So if you're still having trouble after that, then you can request assistance and we assist you just the same. Next slide. We also offer photocopying, laminating, binding, printing, and as I said before, scanning and emailing. Now, if you are on the main campus, you have the luxury of a document center which offers similar services. But if you're on the Old Harbor campus, then the library is definitely your go-to place for all of these services. And this is the end of my presentation. As I said, I will meet with you throughout the semester to show you how to use the online resources. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Stewart, for your presentation. All right, so from time to time, students may get assignments and you're wondering, where do I go in terms of resources? You have heard it yourself from the college librarian. The resources have been made available courtesy of Fort Mill Community College. They are paid, um, resources that are paid for every year for students. And so we would appreciate if you made the best use of them um, so you can produce, you know, work at the highest um, level. All right, yes. please make use of them. And if you have any questions at all, then she's our librarian and she mentioned her team. We have those persons on the Olava campus and on main campus, feel free. And of course, from time to time, she will find a way again to come and give you this information. Um, she always does that. She's very diligent in making sure the students know where to find what. So you have no excuse for not producing quality work when Portmore Community College has provided the resources that you need. All right. All right. So I was told that Mrs. Riley is back with us at a little bit of technical difficulty. So at this time, I'm going to ask Ms. Nadine Riley, our registrar, to come and make her presentation. Mrs. Riley. Thank you, Mrs. Christie. A pleasant good evening to all students, all members of staff. Welcome to Portmore Community College. Our presentation will be a very short one this evening, not as long as this morning. Um, you have been interfacing with the registry, registry department from your admissions to the college. We have, have been processing your applications online. Some of the other features that we do, we process your ID as well. That will be a date will be set later on in the semester for the processing of your IDs. Our students need to have new students, returning students need to have a valid ID. Some of the letters that we offer to students, transcript letter, status letter, embassy letter, passport letter, work and travel, um, progress support, completion letters, um, you can also request tuition letters and refund letters through us. Those two letters are done by our accounts department. So I would like to make special attention to registration. Um, you know, tomorrow you will be going to your bearing departments for the departmental meeting. So I know you will get your timetables and your structures and so forth there. But I want to advise that all students need to register. Once you have received your timetable and they are uploaded on ISIMS, all students are required to register for their classes. So you will register for the courses that is on your timetable. And you will select that teacher that is stated on the timetable. 
So when you get your timetable, you will see if you are full time, you will see the days there that are there. You will see also a time and a lecturer's name. So you will select the courses based on that. If you are having difficulties, then you can always ask for assistance um, at admissions, or you can call us, or you can also go um, at the IT department and they will also assist you if you are having issues in registration. Pertaining to your registration, it's very vital because at the end of the semester, when you are to get your grades, if you are not registered, then the teacher would not have you on your class list. Registration, when you have registered an ISIM, an automatic class list is formed, and this class is enabled the teacher to know who, is, who exactly is in her, is or her class. At the end of the semester, when the teacher is ready to upload your grades, she needs to have your registration your name needs to be on her list class list in order for her to do so so if you do not register you will not be able to get your grade at the end of the semester um i hand it right there any further updates or queries you might have you can always call or email i'll respond to you thank you good night All right, thank you very much, Mrs. Riley. And she has a very large team that works um, to make sure that your registration process, your, the collecting of your documents, disseminating of information, um, proper procedures, and so on. She has an entire, a very large team that works with her. There are different locations at the college for those of you who come on, on main campus, for example, um, you will find them persons who are collecting documents, persons who um, issue documents, persons who guide you through the process of registration. Bottom line is, as Ms. Riley mentioned, follow the procedures, make sure you're properly registered so that at the end of the day, we don't have any challenges with your examinations and your grades. All right, so that being said, I, I noticed that we have the hands are going up and we have quite a bit of our team members online. I hope that we'll be able to answer your questions that you have. All right, so. Um, okay. All right, so what I'd ask you to do though, the persons who are listening in, that you may. Right, please pay attention to the questions that are being asked so that we don't have um, persons repeating the questions. Um, I have quite a bit of teammates here. Um, from the college. So um, I'm going to ask persons um, to listen to the questions carefully and, you know, persons can assist with providing the information that you are seeking to obtain. All right, Nikisha. Nikisha, are you still here? Yes, I am. All right, so Nikisha had a question. She was one of the first hands that went up. We're going to be taking Nikisha's question. Good evening again. Uh, so my question is regarding the work experience. Yes. Um, so for myself, I have over 10 years work experience in the field that I am studying. Mm -hmm. Would I still be required to do work experience? All right, very good question. All right. Very good so question indeed. <laughs> All right, so there are different requirements for persons who are doing work experience. All right, not it's not like Chinese ducking. It's not a one size fits all situation, and really not like us. All right, so depending on your status as a student, then that is where your work experience in terms of your process will um, begin based on where you are as a student. All right, so there is an opportunity for an exemption. 
that you would need to, if you're a new student coming in, then the council makes provision for persons who can apply for an exemption if you are already working in your field. All right, so exemption is, of course, it comes with requirements, all right? There's a list of requirements, a portfolio that you'd have to do. You have to provide the evidence as to why the council should grant you an exemption. Mark you, work experience carries three credits. So you want to make sure that you understand that once you're exempted, you're exempted, all right? If you're exempted, it means that you did not really earn the credits you applied for exemption. So you can utilize that facility if you so feel, but you have to also make sure that within there's a specified time that you have to submit these documents. So you can't wait until you're finished like the other students to apply for, for exemption. Exemption has to be applied for. There is an exemption time frame for any subject, any course at all at the college, all right? So the, the registry can guide you into what is the exemption period for any course at all. Um, I think it starts somewhere around September. I'm not sure if it ends by the end of our first semester, but for any course at all that you intend to apply for an exemption, there is an exemption cutoff time, all right? So okay. 10 years of experience can work for you if you're willing to work for the exemption. Right, so we will guide you into the, um, the officer and student services can provide you with a list of requirements. You meet that um, list of requirements, and you and the council, the documents are submitted to the council on your behalf. And of course, they are the ones who grant exemption, not Portmore Community College. So they vet the documents and everything and respond to the, the registrar to say, we are granting Nikisha so and so. All right. So that's okay. that's one of the areas for persons who are contemplating why should I? All right. So there that's one category. I hope I, I clear that part up. Any questions? Read that part. No, that's, that's I'm clear. All Thank right. You. So the next category has to do with part-time working students. So you have students who are working but they are not in their field of study, all right? So those persons, there is, a, there is documentation from the council that grants you partial exemption. Partial exemption meaning that you provide proof that you are actually employed, and I think there's a time frame. It has to be more than six months, right? Um, proof that you're employed and your hours are reduced. So it's not full exemption as the others, your hours are reduced. So you get reduced hours, you um, do your 80 hours instead of 240 hours, you will do at least 80 hours of work experience in your field and you will do your reports um, as required. There's also, um, that is also accompanied by a list of requirements, a portfolio that needs to be graded and a performance document that your supervisors on the 80 hour job will need to complete and grade you as well. All right, so those persons who are working but not in their field of speciality, um, you can be granted. You can be granted, that is if you request it, you can be granted. So we can't just sit at the college and assume that, oh, you're working and so on. So you have to request it and the work experience, the placement officer or the work experience officer that is assigned to your group will guide you accordingly, all right? And that's for working students who are in, not working in their field, but, you know, all right. And then there's a category for persons who don't work at all. You have your full 240 hours to do. Um, you can ask the placement officer to, assist you in finding placement, or you are free to find your own placement at an institution that meets certain standards that we require, and also are willing to evaluate you, are willing to allow for the college to come in and do an assessment of you, and so on. 
So we give you the first option, find your own place that is convenient and comfortable for you. And, you know, probably won't cost you so much to travel to that particular place. And, um, but if you are having difficulty, then feel free to talk to the members of Student Support Services about how they can actually assist you. Um, mark you once they find a place for you, please make sure that you make yourself available. All right. I hope I answered your question, Nikisha. Well, I just wasn't clear where we mentioned the part time differently because I work a full time, you know, a regular nine to five. Mm -hmm. All right. So I did say to you that you have to bear this in mind. With the programs have standards. It's the same standard for first okay. for full time students that we <laughs> hold for the part time students. So, okay. Understand? So, but the CCCJ would have provided um, different ways in which you can complete your work experience depending on your individual situation. All right. So, what you have to do is to look at your own situation and decide which one suits your, your situation best and work with it, all right? Okay, thanks. But bear this in mind so that we have trained hundreds of students who are in your situation and they are complete and on their way with their lives, all right? So you're not the first to be in any, any situation that you guys will mention. Bear in mind that you are not the first of the kind to be at the college and we have worked with our students and they have graduated successfully. All right? It just takes proper planning. Okay, thank you. <laughs> right. But then, Aden going once, Aden going twice. Aden look like him gone cool. All right, so, um, it's Shakoi, that's how your name is pronounced. Forgive me if I don't get the name pronounced correctly. All right. Yes, it's Shakoi. Okay, Shakoi, you're on the floor. All right, so um, one of my questions was, how will we obtain the timetable? And I'm not seeing the option for registering on the, the application online. You're not seeing it on iSIMS? No. Or which program, which one of the programs are you in? Social work. All right, Ms. Dwyer. Ms. Dwyer, are you here? Your HOD I, is um, I, All right, I, so Ms. Dwyer, could you um, get some answers for Shakai from your IT director as to what may be happening? I know for a few days in Moodle, the ISIMS was down, um, but it is back up now. So you might want to retry that, Shakai. All right, but Ms. Dwyer, um, could you facilitate by finding out from our IT director as to what maybe I'll they... do that and I'd love for her to join tomorrow um, for our department. We'll be able to speak to the intricate questions such as those and there are some further instructions as it relates to that particular course. All right. See, Shaka, you've got your very special invitation, a, a seat at the table tomorrow mm -hmm. at department orientation. All right. Thank you. You are most welcome. All right. Sandra Davis. Greetings, Miss Christy. How are you doing? I am good, girl. I am good. I am good. Thank you very much. I can see it. <laughs> so, my question. Welcome, Miss Andrea Gray. Is it Miss or Miss Trist? Mrs. Thank you so much, Sandra. I saw and responded. Okay, so this is um, Sandra Davis. Uh, from the social work part and evening class and also their class rep. Um, some things I don't think my team is on this evening because they thought it was for only new students. Um, one of my questions, I have several questions. All right, I, I don't think I will be able to join in tomorrow because of my job. So I, I think I'll be coming to the college tomorrow. But, but it will be facilitated at this very time virtually. 
Okay. Right. Nice. So there is um, a session tomorrow at nine that is face to face. And just as how we're facilitating here tomorrow at 6 p.m., a link was sent. I've subsequently put that in the chat again. Um, even though primarily it was for new students, we understand that there are some burning questions. So you are asked to also join where those questions will be addressed in that forum. So you'll be better able to explore your questioning in that space where um, the most of the lecturers that are assigned to social work will be in that forum as well. So it is a better space for your questions to be answered. Okay, that makes sense. So I just put the link here and I, we sent out a blast and we'll be sending another one in the morning. Yes, please. So you can send it we in the We understand that our part-time students operate online. So you're yes. being facilitated, especially. Okay. So tomorrow, okay. this time, we would be wrapping up a session such as this. And that goes for all the other departments as well. So in short order, um, I, I saw where pre-college post their um, joining details and the other areas will also send blast. So in short order, you'll get that. All right, then because up to the time we don't even know what subject we're doing. And what I say, know I questions. have all of those to address tomorrow. And that is why I say that is more intimate and we'll be able to explore all of your concerns. Okay, beautiful. But we're raring and ready to go. Beautiful. So we will get an email then. Are you going to send the email here now? The, the mail was already sent. That's what I'm saying. So I'm wondering what could have gone awry. So I'm going to do another blast tomorrow. But I also have the link posted in the chat. So let me do it again so that you can copy that and have it in a space to join tomorrow since you're already here. All right. Okay. All, All right. right. So students. Thank you. Uh, uh, please remember that your department meetings are scheduled for tomorrow where you, where you get all of your department related questions answered. So this forum is for like general questions, um, as in the case of the work experience and so on. Anything that is general that you may be concerned about. Anything that relates directly to your own department and the meetings tomorrow are being set up for that. That way we don't have the inform persons getting confused because some things may not apply to some groups. All right, so we don't want to give them information and then they think it applies to them. All right, any other general questions? Robert Bennett, do you have a general question, sir? Good afternoon, Ms. Christie. Good afternoon. Um, this is Abdul Ali. I send you a, um, a direct message. Um, they can give me a direct oh, answer. Um, it's Christy, you call my name just now. It's Christy. Yes, Robert. We had actually, I was actually, your hand is up. So I was asking if you had a general question so that we could respond to your general questions. I was indicating that all questions relating directly to your department be reserved for the department, the department meetings that will be held tomorrow so that persons are not confused um, by the answers because there are some things that don't, that um, does not necessarily apply to all groups, all right? Okay. So if you have a general question, then we will try to facilitate a general question. But if it's specifically uh, department related, then we leave it for your HOD for tomorrow. Well, I just like to know when, when um, in terms of the meeting, meeting ID and password, the meeting ID and password. Who, those, are, those are being sent to the groups. Oh. Okay. All right. So the HODs have sent their invitations. All right. So is check sent, your group it, email. When you say group, you, you mean it is sent by email? And check iSIMS because they're using as many um, platforms to reach out to you. So the okay. HODs are sending out their invitations. So check your mails again. Check whatever mode of communication you have. 
with the college and you should be seeing something coming up. All right? All right, then. Thanks. Okay. My apologies, Miss Christie. I didn't know how to access the mic on the phone. <laughs> My, right. my question is, um, mm -hmm. will I still be safe if I bring in my documents this coming Monday? For work experience? No, as in my CXE passes for the associate degree. You're a new student? Yes, I am. Sure, we're still doing regist registration is still on. Oh, so I can bring in everything this coming Monday? Yes, but please don't tell me you're going to carry Monday and then not see you Wednesday, Thursday, you know, after the same no, question. No, 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 no. I will do it before I go to work. <laughs> right. I'm sure the registry will be more than delighted to facilitate. We understand your work situation and so we're not turning you away. All right. Just make sure that when you come in, you bring everything that they're requiring of you. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. All right. Any other questions? Claudette, yes, you had a, Claudia, you had a question? Yes, yes, good evening. Good evening. Um, I'm not sure if it's a general question or it's for my HOD, but I'm gonna go ahead. <laughs> um, for the, the um, my first year student and um, I- Which program, I Claudia? Um, business. Okay. okay. I think your HOD should be here. Okay. I did not. I did not get the mass. I did not get the CXC mass. So I'm not. I, I don't see how we continue because I was told if I don't have the mass, I wouldn't continue into year two without the mass. Miss Jarrett. Miss Jarrett. I Miss you Miss can Duke you Duke can Duke. you can come on and and, and uh, we can talk about that personally. All right. Oh, okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Also, oh. oh, I have to come. I have to come in and speak. Speak. Yes. Speak, or you can speak. give me a call or something. So, because that's a that's not a general thing, no. All right. Oh. oh okay. All right. All right. Miss, remember, we are only taking general questions. Oh, Anything okay. department related, then your HODs are ready. Trust me, they have been gearing up for you, planning for you, putting everything in place to make sure that all your queries are responded to at their session that they're having tomorrow. So feel free to go and bowl them over with any question that you have um, that's department related. Uh, Miss um, Christie? Yes? Uh, Miss Newville? I was told that there should be an email with some information about a department orientation, but I did not receive that email. All right, um, because that's, um, remember, I think because of the blast, a, a lot of persons got this particular email for this link, but this actually is for the new students, right? So the, the students, the returning students will get their emails, right? Okay, so so the, the department orientation differs for returning students. The and, yeah, yes, the department orientation tomorrow is for the new students. I see. Okay. Yes. There's, yes, we offer business. Uh, there's a quest, There's a question in the chat. Yes, we do offer business um, on weekends. All right, and that is we yes, do offer business on weekends. That's what it would be in business as well. So can I ask a question about the CSEC class? Hi, afternoon. Afternoon. All right. I would like to get some information regarding the CSEC class. So when would I be able to get like a timetable or will there be any other um, I get an email to say that I am invited to an orientation tomorrow at nine o'clock. But I'm also seeing something that's saying it's six o'clock, which is the correct time. All right, for we have CSEC part-time and CSEC full-time. So if you see anything there scheduled for in the morning, naturally it's a full-time student. 
at six in the evening. Naturally, that's for you. So would that be online or face to face? Um, it's gonna be online. So, and there I will get information regarding timetable and payment. Yes, your questions will be answered. Your HOD because I thought today was was that class, so I took the time off from work to reach home to reach home early for six o'clock. I can't get any more time tomorrow again for that. All right. Um, please, um, Miss Dowdy, are you here? Hello, Ms. good Dowdy? night. Can I ask a question, please? You can too. Yes, um, yes, I'm here. All right. Yes, I'm um, here. All right. So she we... could send me an email. I'm going to post my email in the chat. I appreciate it. And I can, you can send me an email. Thank you. You're Excuse welcome. me, Miss Christie. Thank you. Yes. Hello. Okay, so I read that a lot of students are having issues with the bulk email which was sent out. So could all the HODs just resend the departmental link for their different departments so that students can actually have the links for the department at orientation tomorrow? Because I'm seeing a lot of comments in the chat with students saying that they haven't received that link. But could the HODs all just resend a bulk email to their students? for the departmental orientation tomorrow for those who are evening students. All Could right. that be done, please? Noted. I'm sure the HODs are listening and will respond accordingly. Thank you for noting, Mr. Sherman. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Sherman. But I wrote it in the chat too that we'll be sending another blast in the morning. Because we okay, do no understand problems. when we're bombarded with several emails. So we'll do that. No problem. Okay. Um, excuse me, Miss Miss Dwyer. Um, for the for the meeting tomorrow, is it for returning students? I'm third year social work. No, what I was saying is a new students orientation, but because I'm acutely aware of some of the challenges, yes. you can come to that meeting to ask your questions as well. Okay. So that was specific to social work. I understand that we should have begun. So you can ask your questions there, although it is primarily for new students. Okay, thank you. Miss Christie. Sure. All right. Um, that was another uh, question for me. Yes, Miss yes, Christie. Yes, please. Um, Hold on. Um, okay. well, yeah, um, I don't have you when does class for the associate degrees really begins? Because I need to alert my employer. All right, which program are you in? Uh, computer engineering technology. Yes, we'll see. All right, your HRD, I'm sure, is standing by to provide you with all of that information. All right, thanks. All right. Um, all of these questions um, that are related to your department, as I said before, there is, um, as we speak, planning in place for for addressing all of those issues that you um, might have as it relates to your department, all right? So all right. Um, some students will, some students may, um, for example, be on campus before others, depending on what they're doing their program and so on, all right? All right, Ms. Christie, good night. Um, the issue that I would like to raise is that some of I have been getting an email from ISIMS regarding registration and document submitting. I have completed the CAPS program in 2020 and my files should be still on at the school. Do I need to submit documents same way? Um, Ms. Riley? Ms. Riley? Um... There may be persons from the registry. Any of the team from a, any member of the team from the registry? Are you still here? Yes. All right. Um, who's the person who's asking the question? Mr. Osley. All right. What I'd advise you to do is to contact Mr. Red and find out exactly what document is maybe you just I want. Did not. I actually did. Ms. Riley knows me very well. Um, excuse me, so Mrs. I Yes. 
if a student, let me address that issue. If a student has submitted their documents already and the system generated email indicates that they need to resubmit, all they need to do is to check off the ones that they have already submitted and just submit any outstanding documents to the college. They do uh, not. What I'm saying is that I have completed the, the CAPS program. So I have completed that. I'm moving over to the bachelor's now. And so all that document could be a situation where your over. documents, it could be a situation where your documents are misplaced and you're just being asked to resubmit them for the sake of processing the certificate. Right, so she's just asking you to do a check, a complete the checklist and see what is missing before. Um, contact, yeah, take in what you have. Just Even if that is the case, Miss, there's no need to come in, just scan them to the appropriate email. All right, so you have a All right, you want to put the email in the chat so they can. No, but how would we know what is outstanding? The most important documents for certificate processing include birth paper, TRN, CXC results. Okay. See, my, my associate degree certificate already, you know, I am moving to the bachelor's now. I'll be oh. starting to the bachelor's now. I understand you clear now. No, there's no need to resubmit because those documents would already be on your associate file. But the system oh, automatically has invite all students to submit their documents as a part of the registration process. So all bachelor students, let's be advised, there's no need to resubmit any documents that were submitted from the associate application. Miss. Uh, that is my lady. So that's to ignore the notification. All right, so um, I'm understanding it's an automatic notification. So you might right, want to. As long as you know you submitted everything, then let it be. <laughs> Excuse okay, me, um, I'd also uh, like to address oh my God. Let Mitchell. She's asking how to change your program. To change your program, you can email info at PCC for the program change form, complete it, and upload it back to the same email. I would like to ask a question. All right, Miss Harvey. Um, as it relates to work and travel, may I have some more clarity on the work and travel program? All right. You're a hospitality student? No, I'm not. I business studies. All right. Let me say, um, if I may, from uh, the perspective of the college. All right. So what we do in terms of work and travel is to facilitate the institutions that want to come in to recruit. I will say for legal reasons, Portmore Community College does not run a work and travel program. Are we clear on that students? We don't run or operate a work and travel program. But what we do as an institution, as a community college, what we do is to facilitate the institutions, the registered institutions that wish to come in and sell their product to the students. We facilitate whatever um, letters, whatever documentations as evidence that you are a student of the college. We facilitate the process but we are not, and I declare that, we are not, we do not run a work and travel program, but we do facilitate the process in terms of, so the institutions will ask for a slot, a time frame that they can come in, talk to students about um, their, what is it that they offer, and we grant them that permission we facilitate them, they come in, they set up shop, and they talk to the students, whether at devotion or whatever means, they leave their brochures at student support services, and students are able to collect these brochures and call them up and do their own personal arrangements with them. 
the documents that they require as evidence that you're a student, of course, you would have heard from the registrar, the list of documents that we produce for our students in, a, um, of course, in a required time based on your request. Whatever documents you will need to facilitate that, then of course, we are more than delighted to assist, but we do not run a work and travel program. These are private institutions who are supposed to be registered with the Ministry of Labor. You can go and check, um, for example, before you get involved, check to make sure that they are legitimately registered and so on to protect yourself and your money and so on, right? But we do facilitate because we're a community college and that's, that's one of the things that we do, all right? Okay. Um, another question, as it relates to changing from full-time, from part-time to full-time, do you, can you change from part-time to full-time after finishing the associate? Part-time to full-time after you finish the associate? Yes. Okay, are you switching programs? Because that's something that you want to talk to your HOD about and the register no i'm not switching program programs i just want to know if the case where you can do that if you're such so if you're finished that so set in terms of going into the bachelor's program you want to know if we have a day bachelor's program yes all right mrs newville that's your question i'm sure she will respond based on the demand miss newville Uh, Rochelle, it seems as if you have to ask that question at the, that, at the session tomorrow because um, program offerings are also based on the number of persons requesting it, all right? So we can't have a day bachelor's for one student or five students. It would have to be a particular number. Um, who are requesting that so they can facilitate. Remember, okay. arrangements have to be made for your classrooms and your lecturers to be available during that time. So that's something that, so your HOD might have that info in terms of requests, all right? The number of requests that we have had. Okay, thank you. All right, please, please ask her tomorrow because a very important question, all right? We'll, but, we'll do. All right, good. All right, so we're out of Hi, time. Good night. Good night. Um, I would like to find out. I got an email today in which it talked about registering for classes on iSIMS. But when I went on iSIMS, I'm not seeing anywhere where I can register for classes. All right. Um, Jodi K. May I address that one? Miss Holness. Hi, good night, everyone. Um, yes, yes. Good night, everyone. So currently what is happening is that the system was down recently. It's back up now. The timetables will be put there so you will be able to register. So don't be alarmed that you're not seeing the registration button. It has nothing to do with you. The system was down for some days. The system is back up. So we're hoping between tomorrow and Friday, you will be able to register. All right. So I've heard that question more than once. The system was down. And that is why you're not seeing any registration because the timetables are not there as yet. All right. So as soon as it, it, the timetables are posted, you'll be able to click on your different subjects and click on the registration button. I it's hope I good. answered it. Yes, go ahead. Okay. Thank you. You did. Thank you very you're much. Welcome. You're most welcome. Miss, suppose you're an year two student going into year three. Miss, I cannot register for year three. I'm a business student and I cannot register for year three. All right. Let me just repeat that. All timetables are not on the system because the system was down. The system is back up. So now the timetables will be published. So everyone can now proceed to register. All right. We are putting the timetables on the system so you can register. All right. I hope I answered that question. 
for every class of student, whether you're full-time, part-time, whether you are an associate or a degree, that is the reason why you're not seeing the registration, the subjects to regis register for yes. or the registration button. I pray and I hope and I trust that everyone is hearing that. Question answered? Everyone understood that one? Yes, 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 understood. All right, all right great. We're, taking, we're out of time. We're taking one last question before we go. One last general question. Um, good night, Miss. Thank you very much, Miss Walker, for wholeness. One last question, Miss um, Williams. Miss, I have a question. Uh -huh. um, okay, so I'm a full time student. Yes. Because of difficulties, I am not able, I will, will not be able to come to orientation tomorrow. Hence, why I wasn't there today, and I wanted to know what, how I could get the timetables and so forth, if that could be done on Monday, because my uncle is the one who, um, gave me this link, because he went to the school yesterday, so that's what I want to know. All right, so let me get this. You're a full time student. Yes. And you intend to continue to be a full-time student? Yes. Um, I registered last year, but um, because of some reasons, I was not able to um, come to school. And I called recently and asked if I, if I should apply over, and they said no. And so I told my uncle, and I haven't received any email for any links or so forth or any registration. And I tried to call IT so I could reset my, um, my username or so forth because I do not remember it because it was a long time and I did not write it down or anything. And I was not getting to IT. So. Um, I think application and registration are two different things. I will ask Miss um, Miss Douglas to speak to that before we go. Um, I would advise you to re-register, but let me leave it to the expert, all right? Miss Douglas? Miss Douglas, are you still here? All right, I'm not hearing Miss Douglas, but... Um, I think, Miss, that you probably need to go and re-register. All right. So, so would yeah. I have to yeah. carry in back the necessary that would documents? Be wise. Again? I think that would be the wise thing to do because um, you have been inactive for you. You actually applied before, never attended. Um, you have. You would have been inactive on the system. All okay, right. so would I have to carry in the documents again, or the documents that would be necessary? Be there. Your your manual, your documents, physical documents, your file would be there. But in terms of the platform, you may need to do a re-registration. All right, Mrs. Christine, may I ask okay. a question? May I ask a question, Mrs. Christine? One question before sure. we go, please. I've had my hands up for the longest time. I'm sorry, uh, Mr. As All right, Miss Lenny. Hold on. Give me um, a second. Let me just re re um reply to the question the young lady was was asking about before. Um, mm -hmm. okay. my question to her is, did you bring in any documentation the last time you had applied? One and two. If you did, when you said you were not taking up the offer, did you write a letter to the institution, um, stating that you'd not be taking up the offer now? Those are two questions. All right. So one, did you take in all your documentation um, last year? Yes, I did. All right. Two, did you write a formal letter stating that you're not taking up the offer last year? No, because I my my uncle came in with me uh, um, in the start of this year. We were uh, we were trying to switch programs. I was switching from MIS to CABS mm -hmm. and we got that. But then when I was supposed to start school and he went over there again, they, um, they said that it, they only had the, the program, in, the courses in part-time and that's, what not, that's not what I was going for. So 
I called and I asked them if I had to register over and all of that, and they said no. All right, and you are for the computing department, correct? That's yes, computer and, yes, computer and business studies. All right, so let me turn. Sorry. So I'm, I'm the acting HOD for that department. So I put my email in the, the chat and you just um, email me and we will have that discussion. Plus tomorrow is our orientation for our students, which is for day and evening. So we can also dissect that a little bit more. All right. Um, my problem is I did not know all of this until yesterday in the evening and I am currently not in court more and I would no, not be able to No, part-time students are online. For part-time No, but online. I'm not a part-time student. And for full-time, full that's why I said, email me and we can dialogue from there. All right? Okay, no problem. Thank right. you. Great. Miss Walker, I'm the same thing. So I would like you you can I get your email time. also? The email is in the chat, man, and not private. It's in the chat. All right. Um, was it Miss Bennett who said your hand was up? Yes. Um, All right. Mary so as it relates to exams, um, being online, has anything changed as it relates to our exams being online? Uh, that is something that the council will have to respond to. All right. Um, remember that whatever exams we do at Portmore Community College is also the exams that are done at all the other um seven community colleges. So it's not just a decision that Portmore Community College can take on its own, all right? No, man, I understand that. But I just yes. want to know so as, um, as if soon as the, far. As soon as the council has decided, I remember we, um, day students are going back full face to face. So that is going to be considered um, mm -hmm. what the format of the exam will be, but it is the decision has to be taken by the management of the tertiary institutions and the council, all right? So okay. as Thank soon you. as our principal has been informed and our exam officers and your HODs, and you will definitely be on board, <laughs> all right? But um, take that into consideration that all full-time students are going back face-to-face. -face. So you can imagine what that will mean. Okay, I would just appreciate if it would be, if the response could be in a, a timely manner. Um, PCC has an, habit for, has an habit of being late, but you know, some persons like myself, um, our jobs are a little bit, you know, we don't have that much flexibility. So if, it, if we could get that response in a timely manner so we can plan ahead of time, that would be great. All right. uh, thank you, girl. I appreciate that request. And as I said, bear in mind that we have to operate based on what the council says and how speedily the council responds to us as an institution. All right? Okay. So we can't jump the gun and tell people anything that they did not sign off on and approve. We get ourselves okay. into trouble. All right. So thank you very much, everybody. Um, thank you for your participation. Thank you so much for your time. And I will leave you with this um, note that it is a time for you to align yourself. Um, orientation of any form is about aligning yourself. Um, amidst the challenges that you have or you think you may have or that you're expecting, you still have to look at the sunlight. So keep your face towards the sunlight at all times and allow the shadows to fall behind you. Thank you very much for being a part of this evening's um, orientation. We look forward to working with you. I know that I will have some of you to teach. So I'm really excited and looking forward to meeting, um, meeting you at the class level and at the department levels. Thank you so much for being a part of the, the orientation. Thank you for your time and welcome to Fort Moore Community College. Thanks to the, the team, the staff who have been here, those that were able to hop in. I know we had a long day today at work and then 
For example, I drove all the way down to Linstead to hop in again, and persons are at different places. Some people went further than me um, and are able to hop in. Thanks to the HODs for being here. Thank you to the admin staff, the registry library. Thanks to the technical team, Mr. Um, Daly and the IT crew for making sure that we stay connected. Thanks to all the presenters and most of all, thank you to the students. Have a wonderful rest of the night. Mr. See you at the department meetings. Ms. Christie? Yes, darling. Good night before you go. Um, so I was on the meeting. Good night, everyone. I was in the meeting, but I got kicked off because mm -hmm. I was on my way home. Quick question for part time is it online or face to face? For part time students? Yeah. Um, for this semester, mm -hmm. as much as that's something that you're going to talk to the HOD about, but rumor has it that there's going to be mixed, right? I know that the technology was being set up to have mixed classes, and for some persons, right. it will be online. But the best persons to explain that to you would have been um, your HOD, HOD in terms of right. what they are planning, how they're planning to make sure you're facilitated in the best way. All right, okay, whatever all right. My you other do is going to be in your best interest. Okay, my other question. I know maybe it has passed, but as I said, I was on my way from country, <laughs> got kicked off based on signal. Who is my HOD? I am doing associate in business admin first year. So, can you direct me as to who I should speak to? Please? All right, so you're going to be in dialogue with the beautiful Miss Elise Newville. Okay. Miss Elise, what's your yes, name? Newville. Newville. Newville, yes. All right. So okay. look for the invitation to tomorrow and write down all your questions that you okay. need to um, Miss Christine? Yes, Nikisha. Nikisha um, I didn't, I'm sorry. I didn't see an option for an associated business admin when I was selecting my the options online. Uh-huh. So I was I thought you guys didn't offer it anymore. What I I'm, I am sure Ms. Walker, Ms. Walker just explained what happened a while ago. Um, in terms of the ICM that was done and ICM was done for all of the community. No man, I'm not talking about ICMs. I'm talking when I was applying. The options? Yeah. The register? Yeah, when I was still yeah. yeah. Yes, that's what she was explaining. So all of those options and whatever that you would have had and had access to, she says now you will be able to see them. All right. So when, no, no man, I got acceptance already, you know. So when I come in with the documents, should I tell them that I'm switching to business admin because I selected um business studies instead? You are switching to business admin. Yeah, man. I'm talking before when I decided to apply to pre to former community college. Mm -hmm. I did not see an option for program for associate in business admin. So it is as an associate in business studies. Yeah, I saw, I selected business studies instead. Yes, but that is what it is, isn't it? It's the same thing. It is, as far as I know, it is business studies. One and the same, Mrs. Christie. <laughs> One and the same. All from right. the so you are at the right perspective. Okay. But okay. start okay. to your HOD tomorrow. All right. No okay. Worries. You're at the right place, still. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. All right, people. We have to go to bed, and then we can get enough rest. Do what we have to do tomorrow, and then we assemble again to deal with things on a more intimate level with your HODs. Thank you very much again for participating.